wonderful, well, actually it's Thursday after midnight. Happy birthday, sister. But this is supposed to be Wednesday, February 21st, but I was working late. So this is a night, early morning devotion. And we're reviewing the life and teachings of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And let's go to the next story. <clears throat> Following Jesus may bring you trouble. Mm. In this world, <laughs> we're guaranteed to have trials, trouble, trials, troubles, perhaps persecution, adversity, but be of good cheer. The Lord has already overcome the world for us. Jesus continues speaking. I came to bring fire to the world. I wish it were already burning. There is a kind of baptism that I must suffer through. I feel very troubled until it is finished. Do you think I came to give peace to the world? No, I came to divide the world. From now on, a family of five will be divided. Three against two, two against three. A father and son will be divided. The son will turn against his father. The father will turn against his son. A mother and her daughter will be divided. The daughter will turn against her mother. The mother will turn against her daughter. A mother-in-law and her daughter-in-law will be divided. The daughter-in-law will turn against her mother-in-law. The mother-in-law will turn against her daughter-in-law. Yeah, that's reality in many cases. Because maybe one takes a stand for the Lord and they hold to principles. And maybe the other person is not living worth any value anything not taking a stand for righteousness and you have to be okay with being solo sometimes because you're never alone there is one who sticketh closer than a brother or a sister yeah change your hearts some people there with jesus at that time told him about what had happened to some worshipers from galilee pilate had them killed their blood was mixed with the blood of the animals they had brought for sacrificing. Jesus answered, Do you think this happened to those people because they were more sinful than all other people from Galilee? No, they were not. But if you don't decide now to change your lives, you will all be destroyed like those people. And what about those 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were more sinful than everyone else in Jerusalem? They were not. But I tell you, if you don't decide now to change your lives, you all will be destroyed too. Jesus told this story. A man had a fig tree. He planted it in his garden. He came looking for some fruit on it, but he found none. He had a servant who took care of his garden. So he said to his servant, I have been looking for fruit on this tree for three years, but I never find any. Cut it down. Why should it waste the ground? But the servant answered, Master, let the tree have one more year to produce fruit. Let me dig up the dirt around it and fertilize it. Maybe the tree will have fruit on the next year. If it still does not produce, then you can cut it down. Ah. Fruit inspection, Galatians 5.22, the fruit of spirit. I remember there was a song, but there's a different type of fruit that divinely and heavenly produce. It comes from spending much time in God's presence. When you get it, there will be lots of evidence, love, joy, and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control. The point is, the more we spend time with the Lord, the fruit will be evident. All right, the next story. Jesus heals a woman on the Sabbath. Jesus taught in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. A woman was there who had an evil spirit inside her. It had made the woman crippled for 18 years. Her back was always bent. She could not stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called to her, Woman, you have been made free from your sickness. He laid his hands on her, and immediately she was able to stand up straight. She began praising God. The synagogue leader was angry because Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. He said to the people, 
There are six days for work, so come to be healed on one of those days. Don't come for healing on the Sabbath day. The Lord answered, you people are hypocrites. All of you, you untie your work animals and lead them to drink water every day, even on the Sabbath day. This woman that I healed is a true descendant of Abraham, but Satan has held her for 18 years. Surely it is not wrong for her to be made free from her sickness on a Sabbath day. When Jesus said this, all those who were criticizing him felt ashamed of themselves. And all the people were happy for the wonderful things he was doing. The Jewish leaders against Jesus. It was winter and the time came for the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. Jesus was in the temple area at Solomon's porch. The Jewish leaders gathered around him. They said, how long will you make us wonder about you? If you are the Messiah, then tell us clearly. Jesus answered, I told you already, but you did not believe. I do miracles in my father's name. These miracles show who I am. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give my sheep eternal life. They will never die and no one can take them out of my hand. My father is the one who gave them to me. And he is greatest and greater than all. No one can steal my sheep out of his hand. The father and I are one. Again, the Jews there picked up stones to kill Jesus. But he said to them, the many wonderful things you have seen me do are from the father. Which of these good things are you killing me for? They answered, we are not killing you for any good thing you did. But you say things that insult God. You are only a man, but you say you are the same as God. That is why we are trying to kill you. Jesus answered, it is written in your law that God said, I said you are gods. The scripture called those people gods, the people who received God's message. And scripture is always true. So why do you accuse me of insulting God for saying I am God's son? I am the one God chose and sent into the world. If I don't do what my father does, then don't believe what I say, but I do what my father does. You should believe in what I do. You might not believe in me, but you should believe in the things I do. Then you will know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. They tried to get Jesus again, but he escaped from them. Don't you know that the Lord will always make a way of escape? That was this morning's song. I don't know if that's 1 Corinthians 10, 13, something around there, but it says, but God is faithful. He will not suffer us to be tempted above that we are able, but will with that temptation always make a way of escape, exit, egress. Well, guess what? Jesus was able to escape. Yep. Then he went back across the Jordan River to the place where John began his work of baptizing people. Jesus stayed there and many people came to him. They said, John never did any miraculous signs, but everything John said about this man is true. And many people there believed in Jesus. Oh, I hope your belief, your trust is strengthened in the Lord, knowing that he can do absolutely anything. And even in the midst of that trial, in that very tumultuous situation, God always will give a way of peace if we listen to his guidance and instruction. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for being able to read your word and to learn more about your life and your teaching and knowing that just like Father God provided a way for you to go into safety, he does that for us. And we thank you, Lord, that we can continue to have peace, joy, strength, light, love, and every fruit of the Spirit because we are connected to you. So have your way in our lives as we get rest and let us rise to do more of your work in your power. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen.